Under Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's Liberal Party, Canadians are quickly losing civil liberties through glaring inconsistencies in the application of human rights laws via government council and tribunals. It seems that those who receive the greatest leniency are those who commit the greatest atrocities, and it's the average Canadian who's expected to pay for it. Soon after the United Kingdom's revoking of jihadi Jack citizenship, Canada's public safety minister, Ralph Goodale, quickly took to the microphone to state that Canada was, quote, disappointed that the UK chose to offload their responsibilities by removing the former ISIS fighter from its citizenry. This caused prominent newspapers to question if Canada's government will welcome Jack, real name Jack Letts, back into the country, where he still holds Canadian citizenship. A far-fetched pipe dream normally, until one factors in Canada's precedent of welcoming terrorists back for reintegration via a bill passed in 2017 reversing the previous government's position on revoking citizenship on grounds of terrorism, treason, or espionage convictions. The tribulations of Omar Khadr versus the Canadian government are what many would point to as further precedent. Qatar received a $10 million settlement from Trudeau's government due to time spent in Guantanamo Bay, despite pleading guilty to the murder of an American soldier, Chris Spear, among other charges. This during the modern Afghan war. Qatar's $10 million is nearly 30 times the annual income of Canada's top 1% income earners, $381,300 Canadian. Domestically, it appears Canada's own human rights tribunals aren't exactly as understanding of the motives or intent of their own citizens as the government is for international terrorists. Operating on tax dollars, they have no qualms with handing out fines for misgenderings, refusing service, or offensive jokes even. Recently, Canada's legal system has been the target of widespread internet punditry for the Jessica slash Jonathan Yaniv case. Yaniv who is a pre-op transgender woman, which most would consider just a man, has garnered international attention by pursuing over a dozen human rights complaints through the British Columbia Human Rights Tribunal, several of which are in relation to female salon workers refusing to wax his male genitalia, even causing some to close their businesses entirely. Don't forget, the BC Tribunal set precedent long ago by fining a comedian and restaurant owner $22,500 for mocking a lesbian who was heckling Guy Earl, the MC of the night in question, in 2011. Comedians still seem to be making the wrong jokes in 2019. French-Canadian comedian Mike Ward is currently fighting a $42,000 fine from the Quebec Human Rights Tribunal for daring to make a joke about a disabled boy. Poor taste? Possibly. Illegal? In Canada, it would seem as though. To be clear, Canadian human rights tribunals do not have to hear every single case. Cases must be made on clear grounds for discrimination, and they can also be settled through mediation as well. The whole idea for the tribunals is to prevent the jamming of court systems with a direct line to social justice. Instead, the tribunals are adhering to requests for hearings no matter how trivial or outlandish they may seem. Jairus Lovato, aka Bianca, who is in prison for fraud-related charges and breaching conditions of release, took their case to the BC Tribunal after claiming they faced discrimination as a transgendered person. Although Lovato was moved to a female facility last September, as British Columbia Corrections houses inmates according to gender identity, apparently this did not happen soon enough. Despite all this, Lovato was still provided with female underwear, makeup, and bras whilst in a male facility. The Justice Ministry tried to have Lovato's complaint to the BC Human Rights Tribunal dismissed, but the tribunal deemed it worthy of a further hearing. As Lindsay Shepard has pointed out, outlets report Lovato has filed additional complaints inside a female facility for being denied a halal diet, as well as access to laser hair removal despite being in custody. According to writer Carlito Pablo, quote, Lovato was told that her request to go to a hair removal clinic outside prison was denied because of security and safety concerns. Lovato was also advised that she can use razors, just like other inmates, end quote. All of this, of course, comes at the cost of the Canadian taxpayer. While Justin Trudeau's cabinet bends over backwards to not offend terrorists and ensure proper financial compensation to seemingly anyone who is not a citizen of his country, the taxpayer is expected to foot the bill. This includes nearly in any all requests for a human rights hearing, whether it's for refusing to wax a biological man's bikini line or for telling an off-color joke.